find the beauty in every day and most importantly hey y'all welcome back to my channel and it has been a long time since i did one of these videos what i'm going to be doing today is pulling from the few ColourPop palettes i have and making these palettes at the beginning i'm just going to go ahead and show y'all the final swatches of these collections of shades so first i'm showing you a more here and on the right side you can compare it to swatches from the instagram account nimera929 Next we have Crush, which is that orangey copper color story. Next is Lyric, which is pretty true neutral. Cherish, based around cranberry tones. And Ballad, which is cool toned and smoky. So ColourPop recently released a little small series of five pan palettes, there are five of them, and they're in the Love Struck collection, and so they have kind of like literary, renaissance, writing kind of theming, and I thought it only right to um, wear my cursive calligraphy love t-shirt for this video. I usually do this kind of video with new palettes that are tempting me, um, but these are not super tempting me, but I think that they're gonna be a hit because it's something new in the new year, it's pretty obvious that they are creating more affordable competition, like direct competition to the Natasha Denona mini palettes that are $25. And they're neutral, so they're going to be popular. I have recreated all five color stories. I recreated the Amour, Crush, Lyric, and Cherish palettes here. For the last one, Ballad, um, I have three of them in here, and then the other two are pulled from a palette that doesn't have removable pans like this. For today, I did pre-pick the shades already. Sometimes I like to take y'all along the process of choosing them and swatching them and finding the final picks, but that would have taken two hours plus, and I know that because it took me two hours plus to put this together. If you like these kind of videos, I do have a whole playlist with 20 videos now on that playlist, so there's tons of to watch if you wanna see more like this. Let's just get into these shades so we can see how I did. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy it, and if you're new, I hope you'll consider subscribing before you go. Okay, let's do this. Now, I am wearing this first row on my eyes today in the intro, and this was to remake the Amour palette, which is that rosy pink-purple color story. Next is the Crush palette, which is kind of orangey-copper. Then the Lyric, which is more true neutral. The um, Cherish, which is very cranberry. And in this um, top row, I'm starting to dupe the Ballad palette, which is a more cool tone, smoky color story. So let's start with the Amour. The shades in the Amour palette are Passion, Romeo, Affair, Woo, and Darling. Now the shades that I have here are, the round ones are ColourPop, the square ones are Alter Ego. So I have the So Jaded Rose Quartz, So Jaded Ametrine, Daydream, as an alter ego daydream fairy tale, daydream twilight, and at forest sight Amanita. So for swatches, we have so jaded rose quartz, that kind of dusty, rosy, neutral brown transition. Next is ametrine, that purple with a little bit of pink in it, and the micro glitter. Nice, nice. I will throw up swatches here of this new Instagram account I found. Her handle is Mimera929, and her swatches are excellent. So anyways, let me finish out swatching out So Jaded's Ametrine. Mm -hmm. Next is Fairy Tale from the Alter Ego Daydream palette. I am obsessed with this shade. Now in the original Amour palette, this it look, looks like it's a pressed glitter, which I don't need that in my life. So I'm just going to re replace it with this outstanding, like very creamy, putty shimmer ugh, shimmer formula. And honestly, the shine is comparable anyways. <laughs> so there is one of my, oh, that shade is so pretty. Look at it. Next from the Alter Ego Daydream palette is the shade Twilight, which is kind of a rich um, berry slash cranberry shade. And there's what that shade looks like. Ooh, it's th these shimmers from Alter Ego are like, very thick. They have a lot of body to it. it it's kind of similar to Anastasia shimmers, but not as soft and flaky. They're more creamy, creamy. And lastly, this is the At Foresight palette, Amanita, this kind of pigmented purple with a little bit of pink in there. And ooh. The shade is a little dry, but it's also because it's a matte deep purple. <laughs> Those are kind of hard to make. Nice, 
So that is the first palette. Let me kind of make these first two swatches a little prettier. All right, there's the first palette. I am not missing that pressed glitter at all. I um, There are a couple pressed glitters within the Daydream palette, but the undertones weren't quite right for duping it, but I don't have a lot of pressed glitters because I don't like them. So I'm okay not duping that one with the same formula, you know? Here is a more, you can compare the swatches. Next, let's look at the Crush palette, which is that orangey copper color story. This is not one that I would be very interested in just because if y'all watch me, you know, I'm not the biggest fan of orange on my eyes. Like it's hard for me to make orange look good and blue look good. So, eh. but I made this story anyway, cause I had the shades for it. So the shades in the original Crush palette would be bow, or sorry, bow, bow, love, arrow, struck, and cherub. So very like, Valentine's Day cherub theming. The shades I have here physically, well, I said have like, like very Midwestern. I'm not from the Midwest at all, so I have no idea where that came from. But this is Going Coconuts Shredded, At Foresight Chanterelle, Artemis, some, the most orange metallic shade. I don't know what the name is because I uh, rearranged that palette. So Jaded Carnelian and Yes Please French Kiss. Now for swatches, I'll do these on my other arm. So first, that like matte cream shade that honestly, do y'all use these kind of shades? I don't, I don't really set my eyes anymore. So, or even highlight my brow bone. So I don't use these kind of cream shades a ton. Next is this kind of pastel yet still bright orangey yellow. I swatched a lot of different kind of pastel sherbet oranges in my collection. There was also the uh, Pretty Guardian little pastel orange. And I was also considering one within the So Jaded palette, but I think this one caught the undertones the best, although it might still be a little bit too yellow. And this is the very coppery bronze from the Artemis palette. Again, the Artemis palette has so many variations of orange-ish toned metallics. Um, so I just took, took my pick. Yep. Ooh, look at that shine. I really like these alter ego shimmers. They're so creamy. Next is So Jaded Carnelian, that more mid-toned orange. Ooh, is that a well-performing shade or what? And the last shade, Yes Pleases French Kiss, which is just a very warm toned, not that deep of a brown. It's like mid to deep toned. All right, there's the second color story for the Crush palette. And I don't really have a lot to say about this one, honestly. Yep. And here is Crush. You can look at those swatches. Now we're back for palette number three, which is Lyric, the most neutral toned one. Honestly, my favorite two color stories within the bunch, the more mauve purple and the true neutral ones, they both have pressed glitters. So that automatically kind of steers me away, especially when the palettes are only five shades and 20% of the shades I know I'm not gonna use, which is one shade. <laughs> Again, this is a shade I substituted, not with the pressed glitter, but instead with a metallic shade that I think works tremendously well. The original shades would be Melody, Ode, Unsung, Cello, and Verse. So this is truly um, musically themed. The shades I have here are the Alter Ego, Artemis, That Champagne Shade, At Foresight, Puffball, Going Coconuts, Da Coco, The I Think I Love You, Girls Bite, and The Dream Street, Elfish. Now for the swatches. For um, this Melody Champagne Shade, I wanted to pick a, um, like a champagne with a little bit of a gold undertone to it, which is, what the Alter Ego one has. I'll build that up one more time. Oof, so creamy, so thick. I love it. The second shade is from the Raw Beauty Christie at Forest Sight palette, the shade Puffball, which is kind of um, the color of like dirt, you know, a little bit geo. Yes. I accidentally put too much space between those swatches. Uh, So there's that second, very warm brown. For this metallic, I have the Going Coconuts Da Coco, and this is actually pretty cool toned. Yeah, it has a lot of like gray and silver in there, but I like the depth that this has. And it even has a little bit, 
like the way it catches light makes it multi-dimensional. So let me show you what I'm talking about. So there is the cocoa and you can kind of see in the shadow of the curve of an arm or of an eyeball, it gets a lot of brown depth and the way it catches the light and reflects it is more cool toned and silver. The main allure of just pressed glitters in general is the way they catch light. And I think that this is like pretty dang good and comparable for just a smooth metallic shade rather than a chunky glitter. Next is a more brown neutral, deeper metallic. And this is from the I Think I Love You in the shade Girls Bite. This is like, I, I would think that I have more shades like this, but I really don't. Not one that is this neutral. Ooh, yeah, way more brown. For like a neutral, neutral palette, this one actually goes pretty deep, which I enjoy in terms of the curation of shades. And lastly, I have Dream Street's Elfish, which is that warm, dark brown, and it has a little bit of red tones within it as well. So there we have that most neutral color story. So here are those shades, and you can compare them to the swatches of the original palette on the right. Yeah. For the fourth color story, we have the Cherish palette, which is these five shades. And this is the very cranberry color story. The shades are Destiny, Adore, Faith, Precious, and Forever. So this is like a like cutesy relationship goals kind of theming. So the shades I have are from the I Think I Love You palette, My Treat, Going Coconuts, Lovely Bunch, which is the more neutral transition shade in there. So Jaded Ruby, Yes Please Spoiled, and Daydreams Daybreak. So let's do this. This is I Think I Love You My Treat. And I wanted to pick like a highlighting champagne shade, but that has a lot of pink in it. And I don't have another um, light highlighting shade with quite this much pink. Ooh, that's so pretty. Ooh. Secondly, Going Coconut's Lovely Bunch, just a beautiful neutral undertone. I have collected like a lot of palettes, so therefore I have a lot of different, these kinds of transition shades, but when I'm swatching them out side by side, I, I truly do recognize the difference in all their undertones. So anyways, that was an unnecessary sentence. Jeez. <laughs> do y'all ever just appreciate a transition shade for just being a good one? We have So Jaded Ruby, and this one appears to try to be like a true, true red metallic, but I find that it does have a little bit of pink in it. And um, I'll show you another shade I was considering. It's from the Alter Ego Artemis palette. There's also a metallic red in there, but that one is true red metallic. Whereas this one, it looks red until you look at it next to another red, and you're like, oh, that does have a little bit of pink. So there is Ruby. Here is what that Artemis red looked like. And I don't know if you can even tell on camera, just a slight difference in the combination of colors that went into these. The last two shades we have are mattes. And this is Yes Please Spoiled, which is mostly red with some coral in there. This one is a little bit harder for me to decide on a final pick, um, just how much red I wanted in this shade, but it did look a little bit more orangey coral to me than say like just a frank red. And lastly, from the Daydream palette, I have Daybreak, which is a very, very like red toned dark brown. Of course I have other kind of really warm browns in my collection, but this one, this shade looked like it had a lot of red in it. There we have my homemade Cherish palette. So let's take a look next to the Instagram swatches. Nice. The last color story I have is Ballad, which is the very like cool toned, smoky color story. And the shades would be Novel, Epic, Drama, and then the last two shades I pulled from my Nabla side by side, Fate and Prose. And these actual shades are the Going Coconuts Palm Reader, Going Coconuts Coolada. This is a Sydney Grace single in Tiara, which I just had to pull in. I know it's not ColourPop or Alter Ego, but it, it truly captures the shade very well. And there's Nabla's Cubism and Nabla's Untitled. We have Palm Reader, which is that very like true, white and it is extremely, extremely reflective. It has these little metallics in 
chunks, which is not my favorite, <laughs> but if you take the time to like really rub it in, you can get a really, really strong effect. Oh yeah. But it gets kind of messy. Like you can see some little flakes fell down here. So this isn't my favorite shade to like use, <laughs> but um, I mean, the potential is there. Wow, that is strong. Next we have Culotto, which is a nice cool toned matte transition. And when I was trying to find like my colors for this last color story, I was having some trouble just because I don't have a ton of cool tones because they make me look a little bit dead, like deceased, because <laughs> I have really warm yellow skin. So I feel like these colors don't look the best on me. Uh, but you know what? If you have like just a couple cool tone palettes or cool toned just shades at different levels of depth, you kind of have them all. Okay, maybe not. <laughs> so there's Culotta, nice and gray. Next we have Sydney Grace Tiara, which is one of like the most mind-blowing shades in my entire collection. It's a little bit deeper of a silver, oh, but it has so much like dimension and shine and a really unique combination of undertones. Ooh, look at that shine, look at that depth, the dimension. Now the last two shades of the final color story I pulled from the Noblesse side by side in this cool toned row, Cubism, which is like a deeper matte gray and Untitled, which is just a matte black. I did pull in um, this gray as opposed to the Anastasia Beverly Hills Sultry Gray because Cubism is a little bit deeper. Let's swatch out Cubism. I hardly ever use these kind of shades on my eyes. Let me know, do y'all ever wear like gray eye looks? It just looks so out of place to me. It's like I'm living in a technicolor world and then if I have gray on my eyes, it just kind of bring me, brings me down. And lastly, we have Untitled, which is a matte black. You can find a matte black in so many different places. It doesn't need to be this one, obviously. I probably have like 10 matte blacks spread among my different palettes. Speaking of, I did make a palette collection video. If you want to see like everything I own, I'm only pulling in like a small fraction of, of palettes to create to these color stories because I wanted to have these removable pans. But if you wanna see like my Anastasia Beverly Hills shadows, some Vizzy art, lots of Juvia's Place, lots of Nabla, uh, you can take a look at that video. I'll link it up in the eye. But here it is. Here's the final collection of swatches compared to the swatches of the ColourPop Ballad palette. Ta-da! Wasn't that amazing? I don't have a ton of ColourPop, like nothing like ColourPop creators, you know, here on YouTube who have like every single ColourPop palette. And of course they're gonna be, there's gonna be every shade under the sun if you have like 50 ColourPop palettes. I think I pulled from like five today. If that tells you anything, if you have like a very, I don't know if it's to call it curated, but my collection is severely edited to cover a wide range of shades in the least number of shades possible. So that's kind of my goal for my makeup collection in general. Now, no, no one was looking at these little five pans and thinking, whoa, like so revolutionary, obviously, because that kind of component is very familiar with the Natasha Denona. And the color stories are all like pretty basic, but the purpose of this collection is not to like, add super innovative kind of color stories or new colors that you probably don't have in your collection. The, the, the concept is more to have this go-to set of extremely uh, edited down shades for you to use in a daily look. So I don't want to get this twisted like, oh my god, like you could dupe that. Of course you could dupe it. <laughs> Y'all are always welcome to use your own money as you see fit, but what I hope I did today was to kind of remind you, I bet a lot of us have the same palettes within our own collection, so I just wanted to, to visually show you the shades you have. And if you have these same palettes with pans that pop out, you could literally create and make your own edited palette instead of spending $10 on a new one. Also, that $10 price tag is a little, it's a little bit higher than I expected it. Especially given you can buy like the Going Coconuts palette, like the whole Going Coconuts palette for $12. I thought that these little mini palettes would be $9 and I know that's not very different from $10, but kind of is. You know, once you, once you hit that double digit, you're like, ooh. $10. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, please, because I know a lot of y'all really enjoy these videos, but there are also a lot of people who don't, so let's give it a thumbs up. Although, thumbs down and thumbs up both work towards my benefit, so you can give this a thumbs down. I hope y'all have a great rest of your day. Remember that y'all are my treasure. Find the beauty in every day, and most importantly, 
find the beauty in every day, but most importantly, be kind to yourselves. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.